as in anything. When you, when you make a study, uh, if, if you really have an interest in it and you, you really want to learn, you're going to learn. I, I'll guarantee you, anything and every little thing you will pick up. If, if, you're, if you're made to be here and you don't want to be here, <coughs> then, you know, maybe you won't get as much out of this course as you will. Hopefully we'll win you over uh, with uh, the information and, and some of the examples. I want to be wealthy, but I want to be wealthy because I've served thousands of people. I don't want to get wealthy off of one or two or three customers. And just like the c job that I got on Saturday, the fellow that they called before me, do you know what he told them? He said, oh, C. diff, that's very bad. That part's true. <clears throat> and then he said, the germs float in the air. That entire home has to be cleaned down. Every, bit, every square inch of that home has to be sanitized. That's a lie. Because C. diff is a spore. It's very hard to kill. It, it does take some special knowledge, but it's only in the areas of where the C. diff has been touched. So where are you going to do it? Well, of course, it's going to be on the fecal material, wherever that landed, and, and uh, probably close by for fluids that you can't see. But it's not a germ that floats in the air. It's not a virus like the flu virus, and you sneeze and, and, um, and, and release these germs in the air. It is not anything of the kind. So it is only in the areas where <coughs> the person with C. diff has actually touched or somebody that had been working with them had touched. Just like since the housekeeper ended up with C. diff, then what I had to know is we had to get in touch with the housekeeper and say, where in the home did you go? And she said, well, when I came back to take care of your dad, I only took care of where he went. Other than that, I went into the kitchen and the dining, the little kitchen eating area, and, that, and the foyer, and that was it. That's the only other area that I was in. I wasn't in the living room. I wasn't in the other bedrooms. I didn't go downstairs. I didn't go upstairs, just this area. So I knew that all I had was just this area to pertain to, and everything else. You need to come to one of my classes uh, or something because one of these days you're going to be telling a homeowner that face to face and there's going to be a camera in the other room rolling and you're going to be the one on Dateline or on 2020 or um, something. Like universal that. precautions is an approach to infection control. According to the concept of universal precautions, all human blood and certain bodily fluids are treated as if they're known to be infectious for HIV or HBV or other bloodborne pathogens. Work practice controls means controls that reduce the likelihood of exposure by altering the manner in which the task is performed. Now, it gives you uh, an example, but let me give that that doesn't pertain to us. It's medical, but let me give you another example. The best way to remember work practice controls is that it alters the way you do the work in order to keep you safe while doing the work. So how were you taught to lift a heavy object? Bend your knees. Bend your knees. What do I do? Because that's not the only thing. Use your legs. Keep my back straight. Lift with your legs. And lift with my legs. There's three components there. Bend my knees, keep my back straight, and lift with my legs. That is a work practice control. It alters the way that you would normally reach to pick up a heavy object and teaches you how to pick it up to be more safe while picking up that heavy the object. The bloodborne pathogen rule is 1910.1030, uh, and it comes from OSHA. All right, basically what the, uh, what the regulation states, 1910.1200, it was enacted in the fall of uh, 1987. Uh, basically, the regulation states that it's unlawful to send any employee into a potential situation uh, where they will come in contact with blood or other potentially infectious uh, materials, OPIM. 
unless they have been provided with training and personal protection. Okay, waste. regulated waste. We already found out that regulated waste is waste that's contaminated with blood or OPIM, whether wet or dry, whether it can release or not, it doesn't matter. Uh, but every state requires that your company have a written contract with Medical Waste Disposal Company. Now, um, uh, Matt, you're out of Arizona, right? Uh, $2,000. That's, that's your transporter. The respiratory rights. protection rule, uh, 1910.134. A respirator shall be provided to each employee uh, when such equipment is necessary to protect the health of the employee. The employer shall provide respirators uh, which are applicable and suitable for. Uh, the employer shall be responsible for the establishment and maintenance of the respirator protection program, uh, which shall include the requirements outlined in paragraph C of this section. The program shall cover each employee required by this section to use okay. the respirator. Um, do you know how to put on dust the, the respirator? Okay. Since this is your mask, why don't you come up and demonstrate it? And, and you have prettier hair than I do, I don't but know. I'll let you mess up your pretty hair more than, than, than messing what hair up I have. You're not going to mess that helmet up. Be right. <laughs> yeah, I'm jealous about your hair. I really am. Okay, so you see that he donned the, the respirator from underneath. He's got, he's got a, essentially, he's got a strap at 11 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 5 o'clock and 7 o'clock. Now, uh, show them how you're going to, to fit test this in the field. He, he'll have his cartridges on, and then he puts his hand over it. Breathe in again. Do you see it suck into his face? Okay. Um, and, and so, if he felt any air come in at his chin, he would adjust these two So, these are the type of things that we use. Uh, drills, drill bits, electric kit. Did you get electric kit? Uh -huh. Come on in there. You got to tell them about that because that is a huge time saver. Huge. Isn't it? Foam Isn't foam it? Rubber. Are we going to show them or are we going to uh, just tell them? If we have foam rubber, I don't know if we have foam rubber around, do we? Uh, okay, okay. Picture, picture this. This is amazing. Can I, can I describe this? Is it? Oh, yeah. Amazing when I saw yeah. this. <laughs> when, when you grab your foam rubber and you need to cut it out, you normally take a box knife and you put it down. This thing, and you got to do it like four, five, six times, and you're, you get tired of doing that, and you really don't have a clear cut, and you're cutting through. What a pain in the butt. You take this electric knife, and it goes through this foam rubber like a knife through hot butter. And Absolutely. it is unbelievable, and it takes like 30 seconds. Yeah.